Welcome to Copyright and the Internet, produced by Nancy Brown as part of the Provincial Instructor Diploma Program course PIDP 3240 at Vancouver Community College in the summer of 2011. Our project team consisted of Stacy Grubb, Terry Burley, and Nancy Brown. With special thanks to Bill Folger, model extraordinaire and artistic consultant. Can anyone remember what we did before the internet? It seems like such a long time ago. We had to know where to look for information. What was it called? Who was the author? Was it a book? A journal article? It was all very complex and time-consuming. But with the internet, we can upload information with a single click. We can download information to our digital devices. We can reach into the web and pull out music, pictures, text of all kinds. The list is endless. There's almost nothing we can't find on the internet to enrich our lives. Life is good. But wait, is it that simple? Actually, it's not. There's a pesky little thing called copyright that complicates things. You know that symbol that we see on published books and music? The one with the capital C surrounded by a circle. Yes, that's the one. That is the copyright symbol. So what does it mean? Put quite simply, it's the right to copy. Everything that is written, recorded, or published, whether it is in the form of books, magazines, CDs, or posted on the internet, is the property of the creator. And the creator gets to decide how it can be used. So what does that mean to you? Before you click that upload or download button, let's think about it for a minute. Let's say you've created a blog where you write political articles about your views on global topics. What if you want to include someone else's work? Maybe add some background music? Insert some photos to make your point? Well, now you're not on such solid ground. Did you check the usage rights for the music and the pictures? If you copied your music from a CD, it will say all rights reserved or some equivalent wording on the CD or the case. That's a problem. So, you have two choices. You can contact the artist or his publisher and ask for permission to use the material, explaining what you plan to do with it. This could be expensive. Or, you can go to Plan B. Do an internet search for open source materials. One way to do this is through an advanced search on Google. At the bottom of the advanced search page, click on usage rights and you will see options listed that show the different levels of usage you're looking for. If you want to use and share you need to click on that option. Then you know that the results of that search will be safe to use without any copyright infringement concerns. Now you and the copyright police can live comfortably together and you can still get lots of great information from the Internet. Yes, life is good.